Today's Jank Brew is a card I have never played against in Standard, despite it being a uh, Mythic Rare. That card is Zimone and Dina. Zimone and Dina, a bug card, black, green, blue. 3-4 Legendary Human Dryad. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, target opponent loses two life and you gain. Zimone and Dina also has an activated ability requiring you to tap it, Sacrifice another creature, draw a card, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped. If you control eight or more lands, repeat this process. Now, there are at least two clear ways to build around Zimona, Zimona and Dina, one of which is to draw your second card each turn, and the other one is probably token ramp. There's not a lot of great token ramp options, uh, and, and just comparatively to the other ramp strategies within Standard right now, that approach seemed less worthy than simply just trying to draw your second card uh, each turn. So the theme of this deck is that triggered ability. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, target opponent loses two life and gain two life. To go along with that, uh, we have Gixian Puppeteer, which serves as multiple like additional copies of Zimone and Dina in that it has the same triggered ability. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, each opponent loses two life and you what we're trying to do here is resolve Zimone and Dina, resolve Gixian Puppeteer, and get those triggers. These are reasonable cards, uh, power and toughness-wise, for their mana costs. Not the greatest, but not the worst. And Gixian Puppeteer has a fun interaction with Zimone and Dina, in that when Gixian Puppeteer dies, turn another target creature with mana value 3 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. So what we want to be doing is activating these triggered abilities to draw our second card each turn, having our opponents lose life while we gain it, and then when Gixian Puppeteer dies, we want to have good targets to return to the battlefield, obviously Zimone and Dina. Um, while we're drawing cards, couldn't hurt to have Shielded the Apocalypse. Whenever you draw a card, you gain two life. This is a card, if you've played Standard at all, you've seen a million times, because it's probably the best card in Standard. Uh, and we're going to need some good cards in this otherwise somewhat janky deck uh, to survive and hopefully win. Um, moving on from the four slot, we've got some other ways to draw cards. Uh, and these are good magic cards to be playing if you've played standard. You've probably played against Glissa Sunslayer. Glissa Sunslayer is a first strike death touch uh, creature for three, Phyrexian Zombie Elf. When she deals damage to a player... You get to choose one. Draw a card and lose a life, which is obviously what we want to be doing a lot of in this deck. Destroy target enchantment. Great option to have. Remove up to three counters from target permanent. Another great option to have. Glista Sunslayer, just a great magic card. And again, we're going to need some great magic cards that play synergistically with Zimone and Dina and Dixie and Puppeteer to have a shot in the current standard point. Another way we can draw cards off a great magic card is Kaito Shizuki. Planeswalker for three, one, blue, and black with these abilities. At the beginning of your end step, if Kaito Shizuki enter the battlefield this turn, he phases out. Great option because sometimes you can play Kaito Shizuki, uh, phase it out such that it can't be removed, and then be able to automatically, uh, unless they have instant speed removal for Kaito Shizuki the next turn, uh, draw a card off of either Zimone and Dina, uh, or draw a card to trigger Zimone and Dina, or uh, Gixi and Puppeteer. Can also create a... 1-1 uh, one, one blue ninja creature token for its minus 2, but this creature can't be blocked. Uh, pairs well, of course, with its plus 1 to draw a card, then discard a card unless you attack this turn. Just a nice synergistic card to play uh, with our draw cards on your turn strategy. Aether Channeler, I watched a video when this card first came out, um, published by Jim Davis, who's a great magic player, and said, this card is a trap. Uh, it seems good, but it's not, and he gave a whole bunch of reasons why. And um, because I brew jank, I tried a bunch of ways since then to make it good. Back then, the Kiki Jiki uh, card had not yet been banned, so I was trying to make copies of Aether Channeler, um, getting additional triggers off of its tokens, and even then, it still was questionably good. So... It's arguable that this is a, the among the jankiest uh, cards in the deck, but I want to try it anyway. It's synergistic. It gives us options. We can 
bounce one of their creatures to push through some damage. We can draw a card to trigger the abilities we're trying to trigger. Um, and it pairs reasonably well with Dixie and Puppeteer if we don't have a Glissa or a Zimone in, in uh, play or in the graveyard and or we already have a Glissa or a Zimone in play and those are our only other targets. I wanted another three drop that plays with our strategy. here. So that rounds out our three drops. We'll move on to two, which is where the, the magic happens. And I'm going to start with the best of them. Um, Malcolm, Alluring Scoundrel, is the best to drop in this deck for a handful of reasons. Um, one, it has flash. Two, it has flying, so it's likely to be able to push through some damage. But especially um, when it deals combat damage, you get to draw then discard. So it's triggering the effect that we want to trigger, filtering our deck for cards that we want to have. Um, if it wasn't legendary, it would obviously be a four of inclusion. But the great thing is, is that you can play it on turn two at the end of your opponent's turn, then slam as a Zimone and Dina, and immediately trigger the effect. Um, that's enough about that. Fairy Mastermind is also good, and, and when I first built this deck, I wanted to find ways to trigger the draw your second card ability on our opponent's turn. Uh, I determined it was too hard to reliably do that without janking up the deck too hard. And so this is the only card that, that stayed in the build after a little bit of testing and thinking that has the ability to do that. So this is the only way, as of right now, that we can draw a second card on our opponent's turn and trigger the ability. Uh, and having more and more of these in play is not necessarily better because you've got to pay a lot of man mana for them. So right now there's only two. Um, but it is a good card and maybe should be considered for more than that. Uh, when we get to some sideboard options, there's not actually sideboard, I'm playing this in best of one, but uh, we're going to talk about some sideboard options that you may want to consider uh, putting into your deck if you want to bar this idea and try to trigger your uh, drawing second cards on your opponent's turn. Uh, we'll move on to Rona, Herald of Invasion. This is a mana sink for us later in the game. It can also draw a card and then discard a card, um, which is what we want to be doing again in a perfect world. All of our troop two drops would give us that opportunity to draw and discard, or at least draw on turn three when we play Zimone. So Her uh, Rona Herald does that for us. Uh, we also have Suspicious Stowaway, another card that's probably a trap and arguably the worst card in the deck, uh, along here with uh, Aether Channeler and very questionable. Uh, sometimes this card's good, but most of the time it's not. Um, this is Jank Brews, we're trying some fun stuff. So it, it meets our criteria of being able to draw on turn three, uh, but it's so easy to remove uh, and it doesn't help keep us alive very much unless it becomes nighttime. If it becomes nighttime, this card's great, but this is the only means by which for it to become nighttime in our deck. So arguably something worth cutting, uh, just don't have too many other options that aren't additional copies of legendary cards and we want to give it a roll. Um, so beyond that, we've got Pretty typical removal suite. We've got a couple copies of Bitter Triumph. We've got a couple copies of Go for the Throat. We've got a couple copies of Cut Down. We need to just not die in the early stages of the game. If we can get our triggering action going on against card or decks like Mono Red or Mono White, we usually survive them. But often with these otherwise weak two drops that we can't trade off because we need them for their abilities, we need to have a reasonable removal suite. So beyond that, we've got four. Uh, Silver Bullet, uh, sort of janky cards here um, that I just want to be testing out in a deck like this. You got a copy of Spell Pierce. Um, we have a copy of Make Disappear. We have a copy of Terra Sunder, uh, which, which I think is, or the inclusion, perhaps maybe even should be a second copy. It's just a versatile card against uh, a lot of action that we see in standard early and late game. So it can remove the uh, the K card, the, the one mana uh, uh, saga that Red plays. On um, turn two, which is, which is nice, it can remove the any any sort of enchantment or removal effects like domain plays or like uh, like the enchant the, the green white enchantment deck plays. And then we have um, March of Wretched Sorrow, a hedge against dying to red early. We do have a lot of cards with black mana in there, um, mana costs. So if we need to pitch early to stay alive, we can do that. So real quick, this is a long deck tech, but we're going to review the sideboard. These are, again, not sideboard cards, just alternate uh, considerations for versions of this deck that stick with the not-token ramp theme, but with the drawing multiple cards theme. The Tainted Indulgence, I had like three copies in the original deck, decided to cut it entirely. Um, but it allows you to, at a low mana cost, draw two cards on your opponent's turn. Again, tri triggering Gixian Puppeteer or Zimone and Dina. 
Quick Study does the same thing. Uh, Lord Skitter, if you wanted to pursue the more token style strategy where you use Zamone's ability to sacrifice tokens, creates like infinite tokens, which is great. And it's great against like um, reanimate decks and stuff. Uh, pretty sure the Schism, good card overall, uh, can potentially draw cards and create tokens. So that was interesting. Jace, Perfected Mind, I considered one of these as a, you know, fun of in this version. And maybe it'll go back in, um, but I haven't tried it yet. Again, it lets you draw cards, but keeps you alive too. And I think uh, in the token version in Rika, Domnathi might even be a reasonable alternative to Shieldred, even though Shieldred's great. There were early versions of Green Black, Wind Shieldred, and Enrika were both in standard. And there were some decks putting up great performances in tournaments with Enrika in, in lieu of Shieldred, which is surprising. Uh, of course, the last uh, janky card to throw in here is the Goose Mother. Uh, this card. It's the bill in that it draws cards uh, and has some evasion. Um, it creates some tokens. You can't sacrifice those tokens to uh, uh, Zimone, unfortunately. But probably the worst card to consider among them. But it, it is a nice mana sink. And one thing to note is that if you go the, uh, the route of tokens and ramp, you need payoffs that also play with your strategy. So Goose Mother might be worthy of considering as maybe one or two of if you were to rebuild this deck with the token sack ramp theme. Uh, we've gone overboard, so we're going to call it there and get into some action.